Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm going to be showing you how you can create uh, basically a rocket launcher. Um, it's going to fire out a little thing that tracks some targets and then it's going to launch missiles at them as you can see here. And I'm going to be showing you guys how you can create this yourselves. All right. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create a couple blueprints. So we're going to go up here, we're going to create a couple actors. First one we're going to call missile. And the second actor blueprint we're going to create is going to be our target identifier. Now we're going to go into our target identifier here. And we'll just add a sphere to it. And we can scale this down uh, 0.25. give it color. And then I'm going to add one variable here. And we'll call this player ref. And we'll make this instance editable. And we want to expose this on spawn. And what we're going to do in here is we are going to go to our event graph. And off of begin play, we're going to have a delay say we wait about one second and we're going to need to add a component projectile movement and if we click on the projectile movement we want to turn the gravity off and we can have this initial speed be like 1500 initial and max speed so we're going to wait a second, and then we're going to take the projectile movement, and we're going to say set velocity. And we want to set this velocity to zero. And then we're going to set actor hidden. Not that one. Set actor hidden in game. we will set that to true. And then we want to have a multi-sphere trace for objects. And the object types, uh, we're going to right click here and promote this to a variable. And if we compile this, we can set our object types. And what we want this to be is pawns, because that's what our enemies are. And then we're going to grab our sphere component here. And we'll say get world location. And we want to set that to be the start and end value of this sphere trace. And then we're going to set the radius to something like 600. And then we're going to take our out hits. And we're going to loop through them for each loop. And what we want to do is check and see if it's one of our um, enemies. So we'll split this structure pin here. And I'm going to take the hit actor and cast it to enemy BP. And this is just uh, the third person mesh. I've created another blueprint using that mesh and and just called it the enemy blueprint here. And if this is true, what we're going to do is we're going to take this and add it to an array. So I'm going to say add to an array. Actually, sorry. Add unique. And then we'll right click here and promote this to a variable. And we'll call this hit targets. Once we have that, off of the completed here, we're going to have a branch. And what we want to check is we want to check the length of this against a counter. So we're going to add a variable here and call this counter. And we'll make this an integer. We can compile that. We'll drag our counter out. 
and we will say less than. And we want to check the length of this array. And if it's less than the length of this array, if that's true, then we're going to spawn um, some missile actors. Okay. Before we do that, we're going to have to go into our missile. So get this one. And we are also going to make this a sphere. We'll call this missile mesh. And we can give this a different color. And then we'll go into our event graph. Make sure our missile can overlap. So we don't want to block all dynamic. We'll just say overlap all. We can get rid of this. And off of begin play, what we want to do is suggest projectile velocity. Not that one, this one, custom arc. And the start position that we're going to have is actually going to be our player character. So we're going to need to pass that information through. So we're going to create a variable here and we'll call it player ref. And we'll make this instance editable and expose it on spawn. And we want this to be of type third person character and compile and save that we'll take our player reference and if I open up this third person character for you guys you can see right here I've added a billboard and I've called it the launch point so you can just go here to add component billboard and just give it whatever name you want called it this launch point here and this is where we're going to fire off the rockets or missiles from so we can go back into our missile reference and from our player reference we'll say get launch point right here and we're going to take this and say get world location And we're going to find look at rotation. And this is going to be the starting point. And the target point we will get to in a minute. So after we do this, we're going to want to set world rotation of our launch point here. And the rotation we want to put that at will be this one. And this missile is also going to need a projectile movement component. But this one we're going to leave gravity on. And for the initial speed, this really doesn't matter. You could put 1,000 because we're going to immediately change that. Actually, for the max speed, make this a bigger number like 10,000. And then we're going to drag out from projectile movement and we'll say set velocity and we want this out launch velocity to be our projectile movement velocity so hook this up like that and then we can add one more component a sphere collision and we will scale this up and attach it to our missile mesh here and then we'll go back to the event graph and we'll take this sphere and we'll go down here make sure it can have overlap events and then we'll grab the second one here on component begin overlap 
In this, we're going to go to a branch node. And then I'm going to say spawn emitter at location. This is just to give that um, exploding effect. You guys can add whatever you want over here. And for this other actor, we'll get actor location. And we're going to plug that in to here. And for this, we will check equals object and plug that into here. Now, the last thing we need, if we right click here, promote this to a variable. We'll call this our target actor. And we want to make this of type actor object reference. And we can also make this instance editable and expose it on spawn. And we'll take our target actor and we will get actor location. And this is what we're going to plug into our find look at rotation here. And we're also going to plug this into the end position. And this is going to be the starting position. So that's all we're going to need to do for our missile. Now we can go into our third person character here. And I will delete this. And I'm just using the X key here to launch the target identifier. And what we're going to do is say spawn actor from class and the actor will be our target identifier here. This should have... Ah, didn't fix this player reference. This needs to be third person character, expose on spawn and instance editable here. Let me delete this and get another one. Spawn actor from class. We'll look for our target identifier here. And now you see it comes up with this player reference. We'll just drag out and say get reference to self. And then we're going to take our launch point and say get world location. And we'll split this structure pin here. And we'll plug this into the location. And we'll also get world rotation. And we'll plug that in here. Hit compile and save. And that's all we need to do for that. So now if we go into our target identifier, let's see. now that we have all of this done, And then come here. Off of this branch node, what we want to do is set world rotation. And the rotation that we're going to want to set is the launch point in the player character. So I got to, we'll drag out our player reference here. We'll say set world rotation of the launch point. And we will hook that up to the false here. And then we will drag out of here and say get capsule component. And we'll get world rotation. And this will set our launch point back to the um, capsule's world rotation of the of the player, so everything will be lined up when we uh, fire off another volley. And off of this, we're going to want to destroy our actor. Now, off of the true, we're going to want to spawn our missile. 
spawn actor from class here. And we will search for our missile. And you see the missile is asking for a player reference. So we can just drag from here, give it our player reference. And then it's going to ask for a target. And the target is going to come from these hit targets here. So we'll drag out of this and say get. And we're going to take this and go into our target actor. And we'll take our counter and plug it into here. And once we have that, we're going to want to increment. And just to give it more of a volley feel, we will have a delay, maybe half a second, before we come and loop back around to our branch node here. And try and clean this up a bit for you guys. Get some of this stuff out of the way. So you should end up with something that looks like that. Now if we hit compile, what is this missing? Oh, of course, the transform. So we'll get the launch point, and we'll say get world transform. And this is what we're going to plug into here. Should compile and save. And now, if we minimize here, we hit play. We'll take a look at our enemies here. We'll fire out our missile. And I forgot to shrink those down. My bad. So we'll go into the missile, missile mesh and just make this 0.25. Compile and save. And now it shouldn't look so ridiculous. Now we'll hit X, we'll shoot out the tracer. And as you can see, it's finding the targets within a certain radius. Now, if you guys don't like that arc path, what you can do, um, I think it's in the missile here. So the suggest projectile velocity custom arc the arc parameter at 0.5 gives you a 45 degree angle. The higher this value goes, the more straight, um, closer to like zero degrees the arc is going to be. But if you put it at something like 0.2, you'll see that you get a little bit more um, of an upward volley, which I think I like that effect better for a missile launcher. You see now it's kind of going up higher in the sky and landing on the enemies. All right, guys, I hope you thought that was helpful. And if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more tutorials. All right, see you guys later.